Hello and welcome everyone. Marcus Small here from thesmallman.com. Look, I'm going to show you how you can loop through worksheets efficiently. So we've got these three sheets, task one, task two, and task three. They're all reasonably the same. We're going to iterate through each of them in turn. So press Alt F11 and we'll go in the back end. Now we're in the Visual Basic Editor, so we'll create a basic sub. So we'll say sub loop IT, yeah, so loop it, okay. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a variable to uh, it, iterate through the sheet. So it's going to be a WS, short for worksheet. So it could be anything but dim WS as a worksheet. Okay, good stuff. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a for each loop where we loop through each worksheet in the workbook. So we say for each WS in sheets. Now that's our looping construct. We end it, next WS. And then in here, this is where the magic happens. This is where we make stuff happen. So we're going to go through each of the sheets in the workbook. So we're going to say worksheet WS dot, and then we'll choose a range, and we might just choose A2 because it's clear. A2, square bracket, close square bracket, um, dot, and this is what I usually do to in to test code. I just say interior dot color equals, and you can choose one of these colors, VB red, VB blue, so I might just choose red. VB red, blue, green, orange, no, not orange, yellow, yeah? And there's many more. So basically now we've got our construct, and then what it should be doing is making A2 red. So we can see if this works, so we'll press F8 to start the, the code and we press F8 again and then this is where the rubber hits the road so when we press F8 we should see that cell A2 go red and there we go now we press F8 again now what it's doing is it's going to go to task 2 and it's going to make that red but notice how nothing actually happens you don't need to go onto the sheet for it to happen now all of those have have happened it goes out of the loop and then when we click on task 2 the cell is red Task three, the cell is red, yeah? So that's one way you can loop through a worksheet, calling each sheet as you go. So let's make a copy of this particular code and paste it below. Now the first thing that we want to do is add a unique piece to it, so I'll just call it loop at one, yeah? Now, um, what we'll do um, in the second instance is we will ex exclude a sheet, yeah? So let's do something slightly different. We can use all of this construct, and I'll just sort of hash this out. And then in here, what we'll do is we'll say, if the worksheet code name uh, doesn't equal sheet one. Now, what's the worksheet code name, you say? Well, it's the way that you should be referring to sheets utterly and always when you're writing code. See this sheet one over here? That's known as the worksheet code name. Task one, that's the worksheet name. Now the worksheet index, that's another way to refer to sheets, that's where it appears from left to right. Task one is sheet one, task two is sheet two, and task three is sheet three in, from an index perspective, yeah? But we're gonna use the worksheet code name. So we'll say if ws.codename, cool, codename, if it does not equal, and then we'll say sheet one and then close brackets, or close quotation marks and say then, yeah? And then what we'll do is we'll end the if and then we'll steal this piece of code, yeah? And then we'll bring it up here, we'll get rid of this line to clean it all up and then we'll say worksheet A2, no, we'll change that to B2, right? So nothing should happen on this task one sheet and everything should happen on task two and task three because this is not sheet one. Now, this code won't work, yeah? I'm gonna show you, yeah? So basically, I've got this in lower case. So let's go and have a real quick look at what it does. So basically, oh, look, at that. it made it red, it made it red, okay? And this is the task one sheet. This is because of the casing here, yeah? So if I make that uppercase, yeah? And then I change this from VB red to VB blue, yeah? So there's a difference, and I'll stop the macro, and now I'll say F8, we'll run through it a second time. Now, when we get to the rubber on the road, look, it ran straight over the top. It went from here to here. So nothing's happened, it's not blue. So it goes to the next iteration. Now, we should be having task two going blue. So I press F8, I go on to task two, 
there's the blue, yeah? And then we go F8, F8. Now, this should hit task three, and then it rolls out of the macro. So we look at task three, and then only two out of three of the sheets have been affected. That's what's called as using the worksheet code name. And that's the most powerful way to loop through sheets if you've got to exclude stuff. Why? I'll repeat myself. The sheet name can be changed by any cowboy. The worksheet code name can only be changed in VBA, so it's highly unlikely that it would ever be changed. Now, let me show you another method. So this method, oh, we'll, we'll write the code from scratch. Actually, I might buy a bit of real estate. Let's go down a bit. And we'll say sub loop it to. Yeah, that's a, that's a name I haven't used. Now, this time I'm going to use i as an integer. So I say dim i as an integer, and then I'm going to loop through the worksheet index. Now remember that little lesson I gave you before? Index one is task one, task two is index sheet two, and task three is index sheet three. Now what happens if I move task three to there? That's exactly right. Task three becomes worksheet index one, two, and three. It's the order from the far left, yeah? So, um, this probably, it's a bit like using the worksheet name in your code. It's not great practice because uh, if the order gets changed, the code goes a bit skewy, you know, potentially, potentially. So we'll say for um, i equals 1, 2, 3. <laughs> and then we'll say next. I cool. All right, so this is the this is the part where you own the code. So we'll say sheets. Yeah, notice we add the s. I so that's sheet one. Yeah, and then we say dot. Uh, now I'll give it a range. So I'll say c two. So square bracket c two. Dot interior. Dot color. Equals vb. C-Y-A-N, Cyan, there's one here yeah, for us. Okay, so VB Cyan, all right? So I haven't excluded any of the sheets, but it will start in task one. So I'll just hit task one, Alt F11, and then we'll go straight into the F8. So F8, F8, F8. Now C2 should be a different color. There it is, yeah? That sort of um, turquoisey blue. So F8, F8, and we should have it on the second sheet. And then finally, Alt F11, F8 again. And then all three sheets should have a mark on them. Now, from a very simplistic level, not doing anything you know, crazy or going into any um, wild uh, coding, that's how you loop through Excel worksheets, everybody. So a couple of like methods for you to sort of get your head around, but once you do, it's an extremely powerful tool and your programming knowledge just starts to fly. All right, everyone, hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.